I was assigned to the Office of Special Weapons Development. In Korea, the sergeants would tell stories. What would happen was that they would really kill everyone. It was impossible for me to think that I could shoot innocent people. I'm Pete Berkowitz, and I was trained as an engineer in life, went to school at SMU. It was 1957. I went into the service, and I was assigned to the Office of Special Weapons Development at Fort Bliss, Texas. But my job principally was working with missiles and atomic warheads and to figure out how we were uh, calculating the accuracy of killing many people in combat. And prior to that, I, prior to going to college, I had wanted to really go to Annapolis, but I wasn't good enough to get in, shall we say. However, I did get my degree and I was assigned to a very top secret office where we were doing nuclear weapons development. In that time, we had several sergeants who worked for us, and they would tell us stories about what it was like in Korea, and some of them even World War II. And that's as close as I ever got to combat, was listening to the stories of other soldiers. And what struck me as really a problem was at the time in the military. In World War II, we carpet bombed cities. We all know that. Uh, a lot of people talk about the atomic bomb, but the reality is many more people died from firebombing an entire city, whether it be Tokyo or Dresden or wherever. And in Korea, the sergeants would tell stories about if they were fired upon by someone in a village, what would happen was that they would really kill everyone. Children, parents, old people, young people. And this started to bother me because here I was what I would consider doing my job, but then it dawned on me, I can't do this. It was impossible for me to think that I could shoot innocent people. And yet, this is what warfare was like up till that time. I remember when it was time to leave the service and they said, uh, Pete, your, your time is up. And I said, I gotta tell the general. Yeah. And the result was that he was not only gracious, but he said he understood that, that feeling on my part. General Overbeck was quite gracious, and he said, I understand that's your position, and I really wish you well. In retrospect, it turns out, and I didn't know this at the time, you know, Vietnam would be following, and I would probably have been a captain by that time. I would have been put in the same position that these sergeants were, where I would be required to do the same thing. So I was very fortunate in the fact that I made that decision and had the, enough courage to say to the general, I can't do it. I w don't think I'm a good soldier. It had nothing to do with the Army. I just was not personally a good soldier. And I don't see that as being a coward at all. And as I read more and more and understand, more about people who were perpetrators and did things like this. There were many who were not mistreated because they couldn't do it either. So that was probably the most significant decision I ever had to ethically make in my life.